The 2024 Detroit Lions squad has a ton of talent and a bunch of dogs on that team that have already seen breakout seasons here in the NFL. However, there is also quite a few players that have yet to see that breakout season and make a name for themselves in the NFL. So today, I'm going to go through my top five Detroit Lions players who are most likely to break out here in the 2024 season. And I can name 10 to 12 players right off the top of my head, but I narrowed it down to my top five who will have the most impact and the most improvement from last season. And I think that will have a big impact. There's also a couple players that have had breakout games, but not a full season. We'll start with player number one, and that is Jameson Williams. Dan Campbell said to himself, he is a man on a mission. He has seen the most improvement this offseason, not just with his football skills, but with his football IQ. He's understanding the game more. He's starting to slow down and kind of recognize things. He's also getting a connection with golf. Obviously, his rookie season was, you know, basically not even a thing because he only really played in one game and he got his first catch by the way in the NFL was a touchdown 41 yards against the Vikings that's pretty impressive and this guy has seen so much hate throughout his career you still see it today but I've also seen a lot more support than I've ever seen for JMO I think everyone is just so excited to see what he can do because they all kind of saw oh you know when he gets the ball he's one of the most dangerous players in the league and there's a lot of players and people I should say that have really just kind of been hard on him and I get it he was the 12th pick in the draft he's gone through two seasons technically only one and he hasn't really seen much action you gotta remember he was suspended last year for that stupid rule they took away and they kind of eased him in that's what they do with a lot of rookies they did it with Gibbs and as he eased in you saw him get more and more comfortable he stopped dropping passes you know his hands weren't as much of a thing that you need to worry about and he's basically got like seven touchdowns when you look at it he had one called back against Green Bay his rookie year uh, he had one called back in L.A. last year against the Chargers. And then he had also, you know, five total touchdowns, I believe, last year, plus one his rookie year. I mean, this dude has barely touched the ball. I think he's averaging one touchdown every six catches. If he gets five to six catches in maybe like a carry a game this year, could you imagine the statistics he could put up? I'm going to go ahead and, you know, if you want to hear my guess for him this season, my assumption is going to be, 10 to 12 touchdowns on the season, probably 10 receiving, 2 rushing, as well as 1,200 total yards, 1,000 receiving, and 200 rushing. Now you can say, oh, you know, you're just kind of being silly. You know, you're just, you're just, you know, your your hopes are too high, and you can totally say that. I agree. He might only get 800, but I wouldn't expect anything less than that when it comes to total yardage. And for touchdowns, I mean, if he's already got like eight in his career and he's seen the ball maybe 30 or 40 times. Is it really that you know much of a oversight to say that he's going to go for 10 to 12 touchdowns this year? Honestly, if he touches the ball 60, 70 times this year, which I think he's going to get 60 to 62 catches probably, if he does that, there's no reason he gets less than 10 touchdowns. I'm going to go with 12 total touchdowns and 1,200 total yards for JMO this year, and I cannot wait to see him break out. Player number two, we've got Jack Campbell, who I have been so excited for because obviously his rookie season – wasn't super impressive but you also have to remember that he was more of just a depth piece he wasn't even really starting he was kind of on a limited snap thing like i said before they like to kind of ease in most of the rookies obviously laporta was just ready to go day one um even branch was as well now other guys like jack campbell wasn't exactly ready day one it's also a pretty hard position to play you have to have a very high iq to play that linebacker position but you saw some of the plays he made he made a couple big ones and he just he had like 75 tackles and unlimited snaps. I mean, if he goes for anything less than 125 tackles this year, I would be pretty surprised. You know, I I think that, yeah, stat-wise, I'm going to go with two and a half sacks, two interceptions, and a forced fumble. And I'm also going to go with 125 tackles on the year. Um, not just solo, you know, just total tackles. And I think he's going to have that breakout season. I'm expecting it. And if he doesn't this year, you know, if he doesn't come out this year and you'll make a big impact, you know, in that linebacker room, I'm going to be a little bit worried because, you know, you take a guy 18th overall like that, best linebacker in last year's draft class, he should be breaking out by year two, by the end of it. And I expect by the end of year two for him to be a top 10 to 15 linebacker in the league. I don't think that's too much of an oversight. Player number three, Josh Pascal, another guy who didn't really have much of a rookie season. But you saw a lot of improvements last year, and he made quite an impact. Now, I don't really have any Lions highlights of him, so I just threw up some of his Kentucky highlights so you can see what he looks like when he's fully healthy. Because when he is fully healthy, he's definitely a guy that is going to make an impact. Now, we're still technically kind of missing 
that edge rusher opposite of Hutch. I don't think we need one. I think that we'll be good enough with, you know, after getting DJ Reader, Ali McNeil's there, and then we have a ton of depth with, you know, guys like James Houston who's going to be healthy. You're going to have Marcus Davenport who could break out and be insane. You have this guy right here who I honestly think is going to make a name for himself this season. I'm going to go with five and a half, maybe six sacks on the year. And I also think that he's probably going to get, you know, quite a few tackles. I don't really know. Uh, a great number for that but I think he's going to get a good number of tackles he's a pretty good run stopper he's also a guy that can play anywhere on that D-line he can play inside or out and that's why he's you know I think very useful um, him and Makai Wingo will probably see a, a ton of you know interior defensive line reps as well as edge reps um, and I'm really excited to see if Pascal can break out because going into year three being a second round pick he's got to make a name for himself and prove that he deserved to be taken at that spot and hopefully he can become our edge rusher two or three and I think that we could all agree that would be very very exciting player number four we've got Ify Melifanwu I don't even know how to say his first name I just call him Ify I, I never really say anything else now this dude my goodness we've been waiting to see it we never really got to see a healthy Ify up until the end of last year he came in and I think his first official like breakout or like his first real game was against the I guess it was against the Falcons right here you can see him making some plays um, and then he ended up getting injured was out for a while and then he comes back in week I forget what week it was it might have been week 14 against the Denver Broncos I believe I'm probably wrong on that but this game right here was the breakout game that we were just like holy crap if he might be that guy and then he follows it up the next game game winning reception against the Vikings to seal the division like it was so fun to watch him at the end of last season and see what he could do when he was healthy and all those plays that he made I mean he had like four sacks bunch of tackles for loss he had like three interceptions it was and he had a couple forced fumbles as well like this dude was just all over and then he's been dropping back in coverage like this making plays left and right he had like three here's another one right here like three pass deflections this game and pass breakups it was amazing to watch him now the one thing I'm worried about is is he gonna be able to follow up that season with this season I think he will I think the biggest thing to look at is whether or not he's gonna stay healthy because if he stays healthy he could be a top five safety in the league that's what I think he's going to be this year. I think him and Kirby are going to be top 10 to 15 safeties in that play right there. One of the top three greatest plays in Detroit Lions history. I'm super excited to see him again, and I hope he continues his reign of terror, and I think he will because he's an absolute beast. Player number five, our final player, is Amik Robertson. The guy that we got and the guy that I'm most excited about and the, my favorite player out of all the guys that we got this offseason. Amik Robertson is... But I think, you know, is just the true definition of a dog. If you saw what he did last season, he technically had a breakout year, I guess. But he's so underrated that it's kind of hard to say that he had a full breakout season. Now, I have no idea if he's even going to start or not. I think he should. I think he should start on basically any NFL team. But with the depth we have and, you know, the fact that he's probably going to be playing slot, I don't know if he's going to start. I think that he should start at slot and we should throw Branch back at safety and run three safeties, maybe two. But Branch played so well in the slot last year, why move him from that? But Amik, from what I've heard, has been, you know, not as good as Branch, obviously, has been in OTAs, has been looking like, yeah, he can start at that position and we'll be just fine. So I think what they'll probably do is they'll run two safeties with Kirby and Iffy. And by doing that, they'll kind of let, you know, if, if an injury happens up there, they'll throw a Branch up there and Amik will play in the slot. That's what I think they're going to do. Now, we'll see if that's what happens. Maybe he starts at slot and they throw a branch at safety. Or maybe he starts on the outside or something out, you know, alongside of Carlton Davis. Who knows? But Amik Robertson, I think, is going to have that breakout season. He is so excited to be here in Detroit. And he's ready to come in and make a difference. And that's why I'm so excited for him. I'm really hoping that he does exactly that. We just want to see him come in, make an impact. And when it, whenever he's on the field, you know, make as few mistakes as possible. Learn from the ones that you do have. And just continue to get better and we can keep him for a long time around here because I love his mentality and the way he plays the sport. He is so fun to watch. Go watch his highlights. It's, he is so fun to watch. Let me know who you think I should have put on this list or who you would have on your list for your top five breakout candidates. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back hopefully uh, by the end of the week this coming week because I am leaving for Europe for a couple weeks um, in the next week or so. So let me know what you thought of the video. 
Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know who your top five guys for the breakout season would be, and have a good one. Peace.